Well, if I'm not careful about this, I'm starting to make a habit of not doing sound, but uh, camera work instead. Although I was just last Friday doing sound for a TV show. Anyway, um, we were down here in the Waikato again, doing, um, this time a, I'm DOP for a feature film shoot. And although I did bring along my Sony F3 just as a backup in case it gets too raining, which it was just about starting to do, uh, then I could uh, do have my F3 there as a backup. But otherwise, we've been shooting here on a couple of red ones, together with my mate Gilbert, that I um, did a feature film over in Australia with last year, and all kinds of other stuff. Um, anyway, I'm not wanting to talk too much about this. I wanted to talk instead about sound. And um, so, yeah, this here is... Uh, Robert, who very handily came down, well, didn't come down very far, he was already living in here in, in, in Hamilton, but he has come up into Hamilton, um, sorry, he has come up from Hamilton up to Auckland a few times to help me out, he's been a burm up on a short film and maybe another project too, so I don't think he's, you've been in my other videos, maybe in the background or something, but yeah, um, as far as assisting me, he's, he's um, you know, aspiring sound recorders himself, in fact, first time we met was couple of years back, maybe even three years ago, time flies, was another different short film down here in the Waikato and I was a DOP on that with my F3 and you did sound for us, it was really yeah. great. And we had Andrew, who's my cameraman now, um, <laughs> he was a fantastic gaffer on that. And um, anyway, uh, rambling on, how about we tell a bit about your background Robert, um, in terms of what um, recorders you've been shooting on and what you now think of the F8 N because you borrowed my gear 40 days shoot. Oh, well, my history I've been doing live sound since I was about 12, but I started. Yeah, I think you do quite quite a few churches live sound. Churches, yeah, done a few bands, um, even helped with TEDx a couple of weeks ago. Oh, cool, the one in Hamilton. In Waikato, yeah. Um, and we had Don't Run Pro Tools on a PC because it crashes. Um, so, my history with recorders. It was raining. Uh, it was raining, yeah. Um, I started with Wintech gear. Um, I had a Fosex. I don't remember the model uh, number. Wintech, for those who might not be um, people who are Kiwis or even um, Hamiltonians, it's a, it's a local tissue institution, isn't it? Yep, um, Waikato yeah. Institute of Technology. Um, so, they had a Fosex recorder that didn't run particularly well on batteries, so I was connected to a... 50 meter power lead the entire shoot yeah because you said it had like 16 double a's that lasted like two minutes or whatever <laughs> yeah oh, about 10 minutes um, oh, but, so generous 10 whole minutes yeah um so i then upgraded to a test cam dr44 wl which is a two channel or well, it's a four channel recorder two yeah, internal and a, um, handheld. handheld um and i've used that for about three years now uh, and recently, I upgraded to the Zoom F4. Which, as people it's, know, I love the Zoom F4, even though I have stopped using it, and now I've got the Zoom F18 that we use today. Yeah, so um, I love the Zoom F4 as well. Um, at the moment, four channels is all I need. But it can um, do up to six. It can do up to six. I did that a lot. Six channels, F4. Um, and the F18 is wonderful. Um, Especially being able to run multiple channels and safety channels as well. Um, what we're running today, boom mic, uh, boom safety, and two wireless units. And wonderful job. A um, little bit of time setting levels because actors get loud occasionally. <laughs> yeah, they did change a lot today. Um, and we had to get keep out of the rain. But apart from that, it was a wonderful... So one. what did you think of the F-18 compared to the, your F-4? What, what, what's your natural impressions? Uh, it's a very similar menu structure. Um, so your learning curve was quick, the learning curve, quick. Yeah, the learning curve was almost non-existent. Um, probably the option button. Is yeah, uh, that, I mean, that, that is one of the nice things about the F4, is there are a few things that the F4 actually does better than the F18, and one of them is like full-size XLR outputs, another one is it's got a short key, a shortcut key, or the, or the option key, um, which, yeah, does make stuff a little bit easier, but then when you realise what the F8 end does for that instead, it, it's not so bad. And, and the knobs on the F4 are a little bit bigger, um, yeah. whereas the F8 end knobs really do push the limit a bit as to how small we can make those knobs be but like you look at the size of it you cannot you cannot make them any bigger like it, it's it's you gotta squeeze them in there there's a lot of them yeah well the, the toggle button's the same size the headphone control button 
It's the same size, same and place. unlike the Santa Vice's mixed prees, the headphone and the encoder button is not really out on the side. It's conveniently on the top. <laughs> anyway, yes. such a subtle jab there. Um, so I guess, um, what's, I guess something about the F-18 that you liked more than the F-4? What, what sort of stands out? I think the colour display was probably the biggest... Yeah, I mean, it's not the colour display in particular. I mean, I, I didn't mind the black and white so much. But what I liked about it is a higher resolution so Horrible. that you could get actually the labels of the names of the tracks. Because otherwise, on the F4, it's just like track one, two, three, four. But this one, you can actually see, like, oh, I've called this and can CS3E that one, or I've called that, you know, Mr. H or whatever. So, yeah, I, f I found that really handy when I'm trying to remember what, what track is which. Yeah. Oh, well, unfortunately for me today, all the um, file names and stuff were set up, so I didn't have to worry. <laughs> Yeah, about yeah, that, um, I just out there. I, I just believed everything was right and pressed record and stop occasionally. I, 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 so sometimes I, I, I forgot I, to press stop, but <laughs> I did double check. Um, I guess wrapping up. Oh, what did you like of? Um, what do you think of my Sankin CS3E? Because because I, I that's because what do you what do you normally use for your berm, Mike? Um, I have a Rode NTG2. Yeah. So what what did you think of how my um Sankin CS3E sounded? Oh, it's, it sounded beautiful. Um, it handled levels um better. Um, so it didn't clip as early. Ah, yep. Um, it just seemed to be a cleaner sound with the higher levels. It might, might have actually been advanced limiters on the F-18 that it made might you have, felt that it wasn't that. clipping as much. Might have been that. Um, I've noticed with the road, so sometimes when it gets before it clips, it just distorts a little bit. So when it gets higher levels. Perhaps. It's been so long since I last used the word NTG2 that was, I think, my first shotgun. I can't really remember back then. But uh, anyway, cool, we're rambling on. People are packing up and leaving, and I'm sure, you know, Andrew is looking forward to the long drive back to Auckland. So, goodbye, until next time. Maybe I'll be doing sound this time. I really need to catch up and do more. I am busy, I just don't talk about it enough. See ya. <laughs>